Hello and welcome to uh, blog 10 of learning to play the melodeon. I say blog 10, it's actually blog 10 mark 2 because uh, I've actually trashed the first one I did uh, because I have kind of changed direction and I'm going to explain that to you in a moment. Um, yeah, I've kind of reached a bit of a crossroads. I've been learning for about, about 13 weeks now and uh, the crossroads I've reached is down to uh, the way I've been writing my music out. Um, I have been using my own kind of tablature, which looks like this, and it shows kind of numbers for the buttons, little arrows for the bellows directions. Yeah, I bounced this idea off a few people on the Melodeon.net and they, they kind of all came up with the same um, answer really and said probably it's better to, to uh, do the more conventional kind of tab for Melodeon or to read music. Well I can read music and my grandmother was a piano teacher and she took me to read music when I was knee high to a grasshopper so you know I can read music so I just thought the other day do you know what I'm kind of wasting my time doing uh, tabs and things why don't I just read the music for the right hand. The left hand um, I'm still writing out in chords uh, and I'll show you what I've come up with. Um, I did a recording of a tune called Bright in Camp for Melodeon.net's Tune of the Month, August 2011. Um, and um, I'm going to go through how I learnt that today and the way that I do it. I'm not saying this is the definitive way of playing it, it's just the way that I played it. So I'll show you the music that I'm now using. So on top you can see in red the, the bass notes and the chords. The bass notes are written in uppercase, capitals if you like, and the chords are written in a lowercase. So it's in the key of G, so it's all G's and C's and D's. And you've got the actual dots underneath. So that's all very well as long as you can read music um, and you know which button gives you which note. So that set me thinking uh, over the weekend and I came up with this chart which you can find published on um, Melodeon.net under their uh, um, keyboard uh, displays, keyboard charts. And uh, it basically looks like this. It's basically the standard Melnet chart, and I put some notes above and below uh, the G row and the D row, and so you can see what notes which. And of course, you can see the notes, the kind of squeaky end, are really high up on ledger lines, really, really high. So, uh, and it shows you the range. So, if you don't know how to read music, um, I strongly suggest that you uh, search elsewhere on the internet. It must be, I'm guessing hundreds, probably thousands of sites where you can learn to read music. But probably it is the best way. I mean, on tablature you can't really show the, the timing that well. And music does give you everything you need to know. Uh, it tells you uh, the actual pitch of the note, how long it lasts, um, and you can put all kinds of expression into that. So what I recommend you do is learn to read music if you don't know how to, to do it already. It's very useful not just for this instrument but obviously loads of instruments and that will really help you. So it's August the 31st 2011 here in the UK and um, it's not a particularly great day. Uh, you might be able to tell from this video I've got the light on. Uh, it's uh, a bit overcast and I teach the guitar uh, to children in schools, in junior schools here in the UK so I've got about another week off so I'm getting in as many of these blogs as I can before I get uh, embroiled in the, uh, the work I do at school. And so what I'm going to do in this video is just show you uh, how I do Brighton Camp and show you how I've incorporated um, a new little skill which is using the bellows a bit better. And you'll be able to download this sheet of music for um, Brighton Camp. Uh, it's actually been put together by Lester Bailey, who's uh, one of the guys on there, does lots of stuff to help uh, Melodian players around the world. And I've just added in uh, the chords uh, there on top and the bass notes. And if you look very carefully, you'll be able to see, uh, hopefully, you might be able to see some blue asterisks, right, a blue asterisk underneath the odd note. And that indicates that it's going to be um, that note is played on the D row because this is mainly G row because it's in the key of G. So to equip yourself uh, to learn this piece you need to know the names of the, some of the bass notes. You need to know that uh, this bottom button nearest the floor if you like uh, outside row 
If you push it in, that's G bass, and the button above is a G chord. If you do the same thing pulling out, that's a D bass and a D chord. The two buttons um, inside on the inside row nearest the bellows, nearest the floor. One at the bottom is a C bass, and then the one above is a C chord. So you've got G bass, G chord, D, uh, D bass, D chord. C bass, C chord, and of course that is the same in both directions, that, that, those pair of buttons. You'll also need this button here, second button down, outside row, which is uh, a D bass on the push. Uh, obviously that's the same note as this button down here at the bottom on the pull. Both D basses, and you're going to need them both uh, in the tune. So you're in the key of G major, so all the Fs are sharpened, okay? But you're actually starting on the note G, which is button six, G row, inside row, row nearest the bellows, use your little finger on that. Now if you pull out, you've got F sharp, so you've got G, F sharp. Yeah? So you could play the button twice with your finger, I just tend to use the bellows to play the note. Um, I've said this several times, I'm not sure if that, that's right or not, but I actually quite like that. Um, so then you've got this run down. So that's an E, that's button five on the pull. Then you've got a D, button five on the push. Then you've got a C, button four on the pull. Then you've got a B, button four on the push. And then you have an A, which is button three on the pull. So you've got it from the beginning. And you notice there are no uh, bass notes to go with the first two notes. Uh, that's called an anacrusis, that's a, like a little lead-in bit. I quite like that, uncluttered by any bass. And then you come in with your bass. And what you do there, you start with a C bass, G chord, G bass, D chord. And obviously the bass is dictated to by the right hand, so obviously whatever you do in the right hand, uh, you've got to make your basses fit, which is why it's worth it's worth mentioning if you're trying to figure out tune, figure out the bass at the same time, otherwise you might have to change your tune, you might have to find the notes on different rows, so it's a good idea to do them both at the same time. So in bass you've got like that, so it sounds a bit odd on its own, but it works pretty well uh, with the right hand. And then you have this uh, third bow, or, or second full bow if you like, which is a B note, which is a button four on the push, G note, button three on the push, and for the first time you play a note on the D row, the outside row, which is a, an E. So the second full bar has got this E note, which I've marked with a blue asterisk, and it's button three on the D row pulled out, pulling the bellows out. That's the only place on the melodeon you can find that. Okay, so that's what you do and then you move back to the G row, the note D, and it's button two, button two pushing. And the, the, the left hand, the bass, it's a G bass, G chord, C bass, G chord. Remember, uppercase is the bass note, lowercase is the chord. Then you've got quite a nice, nice easy bit. Now this is this third main bar of the first stave. If you're not sure what I'm talking about when I say a stave, the stave is the, is the set of five lines that we place the notes on. It's like a series of shelves we're putting the notes on. And you're just going for two bars, you're going umpa, 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 or if you like G bass, G chord. Uh, right hand all on the G row. And that is G, 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 button three on the push. And then A, button three on the pull. B, button four on the push. C, button four on the pull. D, um, button five on the push. Back to the B, and then you've got the first two notes you started with. So let's play the whole bit from the beginning. It was pointed out to me that I was doing too much flapping in the bellows. I've got the bellows too far out. 
And so I'm, I'm starting to bring the bellows in a bit more, not, not doing too much flapping and building up the compression in the bellows, just pushing them in a bit hard and then just getting a nice sort of short, stubby, stabby kind of feel to it. And, and that obviously saves a lot of energy as well. So let's go on to the uh, second stave. Um, now that starts the same, doesn't it? On that second bar of the second stave, you'll see I put uh, a blue asterisk underneath two notes. The E and the G, both on the D row, both pulling, button three, button four. And the bass that goes with it is C, uh, C bass, C chord on the pull. And then, now this third bar, I went into the fourth bar there, uh, you've got F sharp to G to A, so it's a button two on the pull, and then G button three on the push, A button three on the pull, and then D button two on the push, then you're going to have to come over to the D row uh, because you need this E, okay, uh, which is on the pull. Back to F sharp, button two, G row on the pull. And then two Gs, button three on the push. It's probably worth giving you a little bit of a heads up on how to read the music. I mean, basically, um, if you've got notes that are joined at the bottom of the top, in other words, you've got a couple of notes that are joined or more, uh, they're quavers. Uh, the head of the note is filled in, they have a stem, and they're joined at the top or the bottom, if there's more than one of them. They're fairly quick, they're half a beat each. Um, if you have a note that's filled in, it has a single stem, that's called a crotchet, that's, that lasts one beat. And if you have a note, uh, look at the last bar of first stave, first note, that D, that's a minim. The head of the note is not filled in, and that lasts for two beats. Okay, so in that last bar of the first stave, you've got everything. You've got a minim, you've got a crotchet, and then you've got two quavers. And the timing for that would be one, two, three, four, and. Now the bar we've just done, you've got a minimum two beats and a crotchet one beat. Now you'll say, well, this is in four, four, that's only three beats. If you look at the next stave, you'll see two notes, two quavers, two half beats, gives you a whole beat, and that completes uh, that incomplete bar from the previous stave. So that's the A part. So let's talk about the bass to that third bar of the second stave. You can see capital letter D. Uh, so I, what I mean by that is the D, that's D note, D bass note, it's near as the floor, it's the outside row of course. Then you'll see lowercase d, D major chord, that's the second button up. And then I put D2, and that's the way I write down uh, the other uh, D bass note, which is the third button up. So in other words, you're coming up from the bottom, bottom button, next one up, next one up, pushing of course. So you pull, pull, push, pull. D, 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 yeah? Now that way, that fits perfectly then with your right hand. And then in the last bar of that stave, it's just G, 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 um, pa, um, if you like, G, G, G. Now going into the uh, third stave, now you've got, D, C, so D is button five on the push, C is button four on the pull, and then you've got the run up, B, D, E, F sharp. B is button four on the push, D is button five on the push, E is button five on the pull, and F sharp is button six on the pull. So you've got the left hand, G, uh, G, G, C, D. G, G pushing, C, D pulling. So that's G bass, G chord, C bass, D chord. And then in the next bar, it's all um pass with the G and the, and then you've got G, D, C, B, A, G. So in this bar, you've got G, which is button six on the push. Then you've got D, button five on the push. 
C button 4 on the pull, B button 4 on the push, A E button 3 on the pull, G button 3 on the push. And again I'm using my bellows there. And straight away you go back up. Uh, B, C, D, you can see the B and the C are quavers quickly. B, C, D, so B button 4 on the push, C button 4 on the pull, D button 5 on the push, uh, E button 5 on the pull, F sharp button uh, 6 on the pull. And then you've got the next bar, last bar that's day. This demonstrates the values of the notes really well because you've got G, F sharp, G, F sharp and the G first of all is a million, two beats. Then you've got F sharp which is one beat. Then you've got the same two notes as quavers. So you've got one, two, three, four and... That really demonstrates that really well, doesn't it? And what I'm doing with the left hand, I'm going boom par with the G and then I'm doing a single D bass and I'm playing that G and F sharp uncluttered by basses like I did right at the beginning. And as luck would have it, the last stave, uh, the last four bars, uh, it's, that's the same as, as stave two. So, you know, that's it. So let's deal with what is essentially the B part, which is staves three and four. this and you've heard me say that I've only been playing for about 13 weeks um, don't be too impressed by what I'm doing on here because for every good take that you can see on this video there's probably 20 more in the computer trash or on the cutting room floor as we used to say so obviously I you know when I do these videos I cut out all the all the mistakes and I only leave the good bits in so every time you see a little transition in the video uh, that's probably where I've gone wrong and I've had to cut that bit out. That's the, the joy of videos, of course. Um, but it, you know, it does take a lot of practicing and that's what I do. I do an awful lot of practicing and uh, you know, the old adage, practice makes perfect. Well, I'm not perfect yet, but you know, I'm getting there. Um, I'm, I'm going to change uh, melodians now. I'm going to show you a couple of extra bits that I've done on my um, other tune I've been working on, which is called uh, When a Night When He Spurs. Okay, this is my other melody, and it's also a Hona Erica, but this is in the key of G and C. So this row is G, and this row is C. So it's a, a lower pitched melody than my other one. And I bought this one because um, I want to play a, a song at school where I teach called When the Night Money Spurs, which is a famous old hymn, um, I think written uh, by Vaughan Williams, Ralph. Paul Williams, a famous English composer of the 20th century. Uh, I think he based it on a folk tune, so it, you know, it is sort of legitimate folk music as such. Um, and I've already shown you this quite a lot, but there's a couple of new bits that I put in that I wanted to share with you, which I thought were quite nice. So let's just listen to the first bit, the way it was. Now I've put a little run up there, uh, which is like this. So I've still got my tune, but I'm doing this run up. So in other words, what I'm saying here is, um, when you're a beginner, you tend to think about just playing single notes on the right hand, uh, but of course you can play more than one note at a time, you can press more than one button at a time. little run up da, 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 da. all on the pull so all on the pull and it kind of goes diagonally button three outside row pulling button two inside row pulling button four outside row pulling button three inside row pulling and at the same time playing button a five of the inside row. So you've got... So put that together. So 
So the next new bit comes in the second section. <laughs> I'm doing there, I'm getting an E minor seventh chord. Don't forget this is the G C melodian. So I'm playing a G major in the push with an E bass, and that gives me an E minor seventh chord. So while I was doing it, I was just getting a straight E minor just by pushing that in. But now still pushing in, we're getting that lovely E minor seventh. Then I'm getting a D major with a D root there. Uh, by pulling out, so I'm E minor 7th pushing in, so I'm playing two bass buttons at the same time on both bits there. So that's quite nice. And then to finish, so what I do there on the end, I've got a, a G sus4 chord. I'm playing uh, button 5 and button 6 on the push, and that is a G and a C, and then I lose the C, I take, take my finger off button 6, and I play the B that's on button 7 of the outside row. So I resolve, that's called resolving uh, the sus4, and keeping the G bass throughout. So here is my new version of When the Night on His Spurs with all the new bits added. So that is the end of uh, blog number 10, uh, Mark 2. Um, there is a bit of a saying which is, uh, fools rush in where angels fear to tread. And I've certainly done quite a bit of rushing in over the last uh, 13 weeks. Um, I've probably said quite a lot of stupid things in these blogs which I've tried to correct as I've gone along. Um, but you know, that's how you learn. You learn by your mistakes, Ho hopefully I am. Uh, really enjoying it. I don't think I've ever known an instrument that's so addictive as this. Um, and I, I do recommend that you leave it out. Don't put it in its case. Leave it out, and then just pick it up and play it. You know, uh, as far as practicing goes, I, I really recommend just playing a lot when you feel like it. Uh, if you do this thing where you where you say to yourself, "Oh, I'm going to practice half an hour every day or an hour every day," that's that's a complete nightmare. That kind of turns it into a chore, and you don't want that. What I do is, if if I'm playing and it's not going very well then I'll just put it down and play my guitar, I'll come back to it. And then if it's going well, then I'll probably play for an hour or so. It is quite a physically demanding instrument, so be careful of giving yourself strains in the neck and the arms and the wrist, the fingers. Um, uh, that is something really to, to watch out for. So, um, coming up in a future blog, I'm working on a, a tune called Princess Royal, which is a famous uh, Morris dancing tune from here in England. Uh, I'm working on that and that'll probably be the subject of my next blog. And I've also started to put the bases in on Harvest Home, which I was talking about in blog 9. If you were looking for my blogs on Melodian.net, I've actually moved them all into one place now. And I strongly suggest that if you're looking at this, you subscribe to my YouTube channel and then you'll get notified every time I do a new one. Um, otherwise you may miss an exciting instalment in uh, my journey with the Melodian. Uh, it's a great instrument, as I say, absolutely loving it. If you've got any questions, uh, if I can possibly answer them I will, because it's getting contact through YouTube. Having said that, if you go to Melodian.net, there's lots of people far better qualified than me to uh, advise you and help you, and it's a really brilliant forum of people. Uh, people like me who have only been playing a little while, people who have been playing 20, 30 years who are absolutely brilliant, uh, but they're all really nice and they'll all help you and advise you if you uh, so desire. So that's it and I will see you in blog 11. <laughs>